Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm doing the Dragon Chief Hyper Challenge again. Hello Chaos Children and welcome back to another installment of the Dragon Chief Hyper Challenge. Oh dear god, it has been a while since I've done one of these. Over a year in fact. I was actually planning on posting this video the exact day that I posted the last Dragon Chief Hyper Challenge, but uh, obviously that didn't quite work out since I didn't have time to do a voiceover. And also I haven't done a voiceover in a very long time. So if anything in this video is weird with voiceover stuff, uh, that's why I have completely forgotten how to do this. Anyways, um, looking back at the last Dragon Chief Hybrid Challenge, the designs were questionable. Ew. They were very interesting. And I'm gonna be honest here, my drawing style has definitely improved since the last time I've worked on one of these. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, things are basically the exact same as last time we did this. If you don't know the Dragon Chief Hyper Challenge, basically you number all the dragon tribes. And then you get a random number generator and generate two random numbers. Those numbers correlate to a dragon, and then you draw the resulting hybrid. At the end of this video, all three dragons that I drew are up as adoptables. Though I would watch the video to see any extra attributes I tell about in this voiceover. Without holding you on this cringe voiceover any longer, let's get into the video. Starting off our video today, we rolled a 6 and a 2, which means we have an Ice Wing Sandwing Hybrid. All those Quinter fans out there better be going wild, because this hybrid is basically what their child would be. At first I wasn't really sure what vibe I was going for, but I decided I wanted to lean more into the chill personality that Ice Wings generally are told to have. I also found that there were striking similarities between the leg patterns of both the Ice Wings and the Sand Wings, both having a more spiky pattern. I tried to incorporate both patterns into the design, and I think it ended up turning out pretty well. When it comes to coloring this dragon, I went for a more muted color palette with a mix of uh, pale yellows and pale blues. For this design, I went for a arctic desert kind of thing, and as for names, I searched up animals that live in arctic deserts. What I came up with was a ptarmigan, which helped me with the color palette of this dragon. Its feather patterns mainly consist of whites and grays as well as some browns to blend in with its habitat. At first, I had color picked some of the colors from the exact image that I used as reference of a ptarmigan, but the colors ended up becoming too much of a brown and it seemed more of a mudwing icewing hybrid, so I dulled the colors and made them a bit more yellow to better match the sandwing part. One attribute of Ptarmigan is that he is an animal lover. I mainly only added this because he was based off an animal, but we're going to ignore that for now. His favorite animal to look after is definitely birds, but because there aren't many animals found in the Arctic or in the desert, he's found traveling to different places, mainly the rainforest. Because of his mix in cold and warm scales, he's able to travel basically anywhere on the continent and not have a problem, as his body temperature naturally shifts to match wherever he is. The last thing I would like to mention is that I gave him a sandwing barbed tail, but I made the stinger on the end a little bit sharper and spikier to mimic more towards ice wings. Here we have Ptarmigan. He is a male Icewing Sandwing hybrid who is an animal lover. He is also very much introverted and doesn't enjoy spending much time with other dragons.
For our next hybrid of today, we have a 5 and a 2, which means we have a Ringwing Sandwing hybrid. For this hybrid, I wanted to go for a more happy-go-lucky kind of fella. I was debating whether I wanted to make it a boy or a girl, but I ended up just making male because that's what I default to most of the time. When it comes to basically everything with this hybrid, towards the end I started to realize it was basically just a hybrid version of Jambu. This comes with both the color palette and the personality. Speaking of the color palette, originally I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to go for. Originally I was going to go for a more cactus green color palette, but I decided against it for whatever reason and instead went for a pink and yellow combo. It's based off of those topper flowers you see on cacti in the desert. When it comes to scale patterns, I went for a more bubbly look, which is shown by both the spots from the rain wings as well as the sandwing frill on the back. I'd also like to note that I took a more square vibe from the back slash neck patterns of sand wings and added that to both the legs and the back patterns. I decided this being a rain wing sand wing hybrid, I was going to give it a stinger tail as well. But I wanted to, I don't know, be original or something stupid like that, so instead of just a normal barb tip, I gave it a more arrowhead kind of shape. When it came to naming this fella, I wasn't exactly sure what to name it. At first I was going to go with something generic like cactus, but I decided against it, and instead went on a long manhunt trying to find the name of a certain flower that grows on top of cacti. After around an hour of searching, I ended up with the name Verbena. <laughs> Next we have Verbena, a male ringling salmon hybrid. He's very much extroverted and is a gardener. He's also very, very tall. Much taller than most ringlings. For our final hybrid of today, we have a 9 and an 8 which means we have a Hivewing Silkwing Hybrid. Before I even got the two tribes that I would be combining, I knew that this last dragon I wanted to be Short and Gremlin. Not exactly sure why or how this is what I came up with, but it sure is how it ended up. As you're going to see through the speed paint, I definitely led more into my own headcanons with this design. The two headcanons that I leaned into the most were 1, Hivewings being the shortest of all the dragon tribes, and 2, Silkwings having an underlying gene that allows them to be fluffy. I know this isn't a super original headcanon for Silkwings, but I wanted to make a fluffy bee dragon, what can I say? For the color palette of this dragon, I knew I wanted to have more lighter colors, but being a Hivewing, it's mainly going to consist of yellows and oranges, which is what I went with. The only other color that I added was a green for the eye color, just to add a little bit of pop. As you can see in the speed paint, there is fluff all around this dragon, including along her neck, her two front talons, and her tail, which she has a high wing stinger in. As you'll see when I reveal the final design for this dragon, her wings are slightly transparent. Little did I know that this single detail would cost me so much trouble when it came to coloring. When it comes to attributes to this dragon, she's definitely an introvert and absolutely hates talking to anybody and everybody. That includes her own family and close friends. She mainly just listens when it comes to other dragons. The last thing about this hybrid is that she has a hive wing wing and a silk wing wing. The only problem is that her silk wing wing on both sides is just little deformed, and as such she can only fly for a short amount of time before she has to take a break. And 
And here's Honey, our last hybrid of today. She's a female high-wing silkling hybrid and is very much introverted. She hates social interaction and is very, very short. And that wraps up the Dragon Sheep Hyper Challenge Part 3! I do hope you guys enjoyed this video, and maybe you want to adopt one of these dragons. Who knows? Check the description to see if they're available, and if they happen to be, feel free to comment and ask for one. Anyways, without holding you guys on this outro any longer, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night, and I'll see you all next time.